This is a snapshot of Florida in Fort Lauderdale. Cars plow through water in some places a foot deep. For longtime residents, it's nothing new. So you've seen this kind of flooding all the oh, time? Oh yeah, every year. Gets a little worse every year. It's much the same on Miami Beach. 300 miles north in St. Augustine, the oldest fort in the United States, the Castillo de San Marcos, sits high and dry, for now, on the edge of Matanzas Bay. But just outside the fort, the parking lot and nearby streets are flooded. In all fairness, these are not everyday images. In fact, to some extent, this has been happening for decades, whenever you coupled astronomical high tides with a full moon. The problem is, the frequency of these events is increasing, and the water is getting higher. And what you are looking at is not flooding from rainwater, it's salt water. It is, scientists say, rising sea level, pushing in at every chance it gets. The first blush effects of climate change that may eventually change forever Florida's landscape. That's one of the, the real problems. Brian Soden is an atmospheric scientist at the University of Miami. It would be very different. There, you know, if you take three feet of sea level rise, uh, certainly the, the island that we're uh, talking from right now, most of it would be underwater. Uh, you had most of Key Biscayne over there would be underwater. Most of the western half of Miami Beach would be underwater. Uh, and you continue downtown Miami, uh, a lot of areas there would be uh, yeah, very close, if not underwater. How much equipment is available? To work? Jennifer Gerardo heads Broward County's Department of Natural Resources and Planning. We tend to end on the uh, side of conservatism when we think about these future conditions and say, well, we can't possibly imagine that scenario. But with increasing time, we're finding that the conditions are more, more severe than we were initially thinking. Florida is considered ground zero for climate change and its effects. It's like a bad disaster movie. According to one climate study, $145 billion in property values lies just three feet, that's it, just three feet above the current high tide line. And how high is the water likely to rise? Well, for a sea level rise in Miami, uh, it could be anywhere from one to two feet by the middle of the century or three to five feet by the end of the century. Schools, road, sewage treatment plants, hazardous waste dumps, and a power plant are at the same three-foot elevation. So if climate change in and of itself isn't bad enough, scientists say throw a hurricane on top of that higher water and what would have been a bad storm becomes catastrophic. Hurricane Andrew hit South Florida in 1992. Its powerful winds punished and pummeled the region. Homes, buildings, businesses leveled. But storm surge, water that's pushed inland by a hurricane, did far less damage. Scientists say the outcome will be far different and far more devastating when the water is higher. So you're saying that if you took Andrew and you raised the sea level three feet, you would have water all the way to the west coast? Yep, it, we've uh, done model simulations using the National Hurricane Center storm surge model. You add three foot of sea level rise to the same storm, it overtops the ridge and goes all the way into the Everglades. So it just keeps going west. So against that backdrop of seemingly inevitable doom, what can you do? Urban planners say there are really just three choices. You can defend, you can abandon, or you can adapt. Adapting seems to be the most logical because no one wants to abandon, and to defend means you'd have to have a crystal ball to know exactly what you were defending against. But the instinct is to defend first and adapt when you're out of options. So if you're the city of Miami Beach, you fight to keep your head above the water. Water they call, not so affectionately, sunny day flooding. We're in defend and adapt. Jimmy Morales is city manager. I mean, the reality is, you know, if we can buy 100 or 200 years to a great community, why not? I mean, you know, um, that's generations of people who can grow up here and, and live here and thrive here and hope that those long-term solutions can be addressed. There's no reason to abandon the short term just because none of us know. 100 years from now, 200 years from now, 300 years from now, who knows what's going to happen to this world? 
Miami Beach is one of the most recognizable and desirable cities in the world. And who doesn't know South Beach and its sizzle? It's a booming, bustling city. With so much on the line, local officials have been moving quickly to hold back the tide. They simply couldn't afford to do nothing. Now, Miami Beach is considered the leader in adapting and defending. We have a, a plan, uh, a five-year plan, eh, maybe a little longer than five years, uh, estimated about $400 million. We're probably 20% you know, of the way through that, so 80 to $100 million we're probably, you know, either have spent or in the process of spending with projects that are already in the ground. The first of some 60 massive pumps have already been installed in low-lying areas. Some streets and sidewalks have been raised two and a half to three feet. Officials say the design is working. The streets here no longer flood, but that's just the beginning. Seawalls will have to be rebuilt higher. And on Miami Beach, there are 60 miles of seawall along the bay and canals. We're doing our piece here, you know, uh, and hoping that while we're sort of in that race to defend and slowly adapt, that at some point state and federal governments will begin to put significant resources into it, manpower, scientific research, uh, to help us and, and other communities. Because, uh, you know, we may be at the front line, but with the water rising, that front line is going to be impacting a lot of communities. St. Augustine is one. The famous fort on Matanzas Bay is the centerpiece of a vibrant city, fueled like Miami Beach by tourism. People walk the promenade along the picturesque waterfront. But like its neighbors to the south, St. Augustine gets its share of high water too. These images were taken in December 2014. Okay, so this is a, one of our uh, type of backflow prevention valves that we install or retrofit on all of our um, storm sewer systems. Reuben Franklin is a city engineer. The backflow preventers are what the name implies. They prevent seawater during high water events from backing up into the sewer system and flooding streets. Yeah, this is something that benefits us in the short term, something that we can do as a municipality with our yearly budgets um, to work on strengthening, beefing up our storm sewer system to protect us from climate change. But so far, only about a dozen of the 103 backflow preventers needed have been installed, leaving the city with little defense against high water. It is part of our daily life is flooding at full moons and new moons and big northeasters that blow water back up in the intercoastal waterway. I mean, we're, it's a, flooding is an issue and sea level rise is real. A horticulturist, Bill Hamilton's family has lived here since the 1950s. Water, he says, is not the only sign the environment is changing. That's a black mangrove and it is an indicator species that identifies this area is under the effects of global warming. Because this would not have been here in the past, right? Exactly. Historically, the farthest northernmost uh, community of black mangroves was at Marineland, which is four miles south of here. And now the, this species extends way farther north and has become a really dominant species. Other, even more worrisome signs are beginning to surface. Far away from St. Augustine sits Florida Bay at the southern tip of the state. The 850 square mile estuary may, scientists say, be approaching a catastrophic collapse. Fish disappearing, dying seagrass, and algae bloom. There are many contributing factors, but one of them, researchers say, could be climate change, warmer temperatures, and less summer rainfall to balance the system. This is Fort Lauderdale, and this is high water, salt water. Residents have been dealing with this for years when you put a full moon and high tide together. But in recent years, it's gotten a lot worse. You can count on the flooding like clockwork. 8 a.m. November 25th, we knew when the water would be high. And take a look at these images. In low-lying areas, street after street flooded. Businesses with water up to their front doors. In years past, many of these spots were considered in a one in 100 year flood zone. Not anymore. We're not flooding once every 100 years. We're flooding for 15, 20 days at a time throughout the course of the year, just with high tides, absent any rain. I think that we all appreciate that the next 10 years are really critical 
Um, I think that we need a comprehensive plan, a finance strategy to do many of the things that we know just need to be done. Climate change has been a tough sell in many places because the effects may not be noticeable for 50 to 100 years. But it's a bit easier to convince folks in Florida they are already driving through it, walking through it, and riding bicycles through it. Bottom line, dealing with it. There's no better place to live than here, so I'm not leaving, and I'll deal with this water right now. So it doesn't we bother you because it's only a few times a year. Took off my running shoes, took off my socks. I'll get out of the water and we'll head to finish our run. Before the water gets any higher.